Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm not counting the days exactly here. Whatever lockdown day we're on, whatever, whatever day it is, it is like whatever day in the count it is. It is Monday, April 13th, 9.03 a.m. And I've been thinking for a while about term limits. Oh. We know Democrats wish that Trump would just leave and abandon us so that they can, um, you know, just rob us blind, take all our money, give it to illegals, give it to Iran, and have the Iranians come, you know, go global jihad over the world. And, you know, you know how Democrats are, man. Come on now, look at Feinstein. Ooh, I can't wait. Ugh, Feinstein. Mm. All these pedos and, and traitors and ugh. okay, so um, the Washington Post democracy dies in darkness. So there's an opinion piece here about the end of presidential term limits. Hmm. I'm gonna read this one for y'all. It's by Jonathan Zimmerman, and it was published November 28th on 2013. So a little while ago, actually. Okay. Um, so it says here, Jonathan Zimmerman is a professor of history and education at New York University. His books include Small Wonder, The Little Red School Hall, and History and Memory, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Now, we start the article. In 1947, Senator Harley Kilgore, Democrat of Washington, uh, sorry, Democrat of West Virginia, <clears throat> condemned the proposal constitutional condemned a proposed constitutional amendment that would restrict presidential to two terms. "Quote unquote, the Executive's effectiveness will be seriously impaired, Kilgore argued on the Senate floor, as no one will obey and respect him if he knows that the executive cannot run again. So, I've been thinking about Kilgore's comments as I watch President Obama, whose approval rating has dipped to 37%. Pay attention here, Democrats and Republicans. You know, pay attention here. I've been thinking about Kilgore's comments as I watch President Obama, whose approval rating has dipped to 37%. Right. 37% in CBS News polling. Even the fake news couldn't prop this guy up. Right? The lowest ever for him during the troubled rollout of his Obamacare healthcare reform rollout. Hmm. Okay. 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 <clears throat> During the troubled rollout of his health care reform, many of Obama's fellow Democrats, hashtag walk away from Democrats, um, have distanced themselves from the reform and from the president. Damn, y'all some smart Democrats. It's hard to find y'all these days. Why are you hiding that? <laughs> mm, I'm from the president. Even former President Bill Clinton. Wow, Obama. God, you suck. <laughs> Even Bill Clinton has said that Americans should be allowed to keep the health insurance they have. Mm. And for one, I'm really glad that the last year Obamacare was in existence, I didn't make enough money to have to pay for that crap. Or, uh, or consider the reaction to the Iran nuclear deal. Hmm. This guy's pretty based. Regardless of his political approval ratings, Obama could expect the Republican senators such as Lindsey Graham of South Carolina and John McCain of Arizona to attack the agreement. But... If Obama could run again, would he be facing such fervent objections from the senators Charles Schumer, Democrat New York, and Robert Menendez, Democrat New Jersey? As a New Jerseyan, Robert Menendez, you need to be sacked. In fact, you're fired. You've been there too long. You've been a Democrat. Yeah. 
A bad Democrat. Ugh. Well, democracy is a lie, so I guess he's been a good Democrat. Democrats are traitors because they can't win elections without cheating. Ugh. So, uh, and Robert Menendez, Democrat, New Jersey. Probably not. Democratic lawmakers would worry about provoking the wrath of a president who could be re-elected. Thanks to term limits, though, they've got little to fear. Hmm. Nor does Obama have to fear the voters, which might be the scariest problem of all. If he chooses, he could simply ignore their will. And if the people wanted him to serve another term, why shouldn't they be allowed to avoid to award him one? Hmm. That was the argument of our first president, who is often held up as the father of term limits. In fact, George Washington opposed them. Quote unquote, I can see no propriety in precluding ourselves from the service of any man in some great emergency who in who in some great emergency shall be deemed universally most capable excuse me of serving the public close quotes washington wrote in a much quoted letter to the marquis de lafayette washington stepped down after two terms establishing a pattern that would stand for more than a century but he made clear that he was doing so because the young republic was on solid footing not because his service should be limited in any way. The first president to openly challenge the two-term tradition was Theodore Roosevelt, who ran for a third term as president in 1912 on the Bull Moose ticket. When he stepped down in 1908, Roosevelt pledged not to seek a third term. Reminded of this promise in 1912, he said that he had meant he would not seek a third consecutive term. The New York Times called a that a quote-unquote third consecutive term <clears throat> the new york times called roosevelt's explanation a pitiful sophistication new york times has been fake for a long time and the voters sent woodrow wilson to the white house well only in 1940, amid what George Washington might have called a great emergency, did a president successfully stand for a third term. Citing the outbreak of war overseas and the depression at home, Democrats renominated Franklin D. Roosevelt. They pegged him for a fourth time in 1944, despite his health problems. Hmm. Yeah, man which were serious enough to send him to his grave the following year. To Republicans, these developments echoed the fascist trends enveloping Europe. You, quote unquote, you will be serving under an American totalitarian government before the long third term is finished, warned Wendell Wilkie, Roosevelt's opponent in 1940. Once the two-term tradition was broken, Wilkie added nobody could put it back together. If this principle dies, it will be dead forever, <clears throat> he said. That's why the GOP moved to codify it in the Constitution in 1947. When a large Republican majority took over Congress, uh, sorry, when a large Republican majority took over Congress, ratified by the states in 1951, the 22nd Amendment was an undisguised was a quote-unquote undisguised slap at the memory of Franklin Delano Roosevelt, quote-unquote, wrote Clinton Rossiter, one of the era's leading political scientists. It also reflected a quote-unquote shocking lack of faith in the common sense and good judgment of the people. What are these Democrats doing right now? Trying desperately to avoid the red pill? See? I got water. I got water here. Ugh. Spill it all over yourself. Ugh. Don't drink it. Ugh. Get your bed all wet, bitch. I love red peels. I love red pills. Um. Okay, he was right. 
Every Republican in Congress voted for the amendment, while a handful of Democratic supporters were mostly legislators who had broken with FDR and his New Deal. When they succeeded in limiting the presidency to two terms, they limited democracy itself. Mm. I think our people are to be safely trusted with their own destiny. Senator Claude Pepper, Democrat, Florida, argued in 1947. Yeah, he was probably talking about border jumpers. Probably wasn't talking about us. I don't trust Democrats no more, man. Uh, argued, uh, Senator Claude Pepper, Democrat of Florida, argued in 1947, we do not need to protect the American people with a prohibition against a president whom they do not wish to elect. And if they wanted to elect him, we have the right to deny them the, have, have we the right? <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. And if they wanted to elect him, have we the right to deny them the power? Close quotes. It's time to put that power back where it belongs. When Ronald Reagan was serving his second term, some Republicans briefly floated the idea of removing term limits so he could run again. The effort went nowhere, but it was right on principle. Barack Obama should be allowed to stand for re-election, just as citizens should be allowed to vote for or against him. Anything less diminishes our leaders and ourselves and that is the end of the article and this was during the time of obama and we are now in the era of winning let me tell you something people it is not a good thing to get sick and tired of winning now trump told us that we're going to win, 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 win. We win so much that we would get tired of winning. But it's not healthy. Let me spell it to you this way. Every time you take a breath, I just won. See? Because I'm still alive. I just won. Good deal. Right? Now, what do the Democrats have for us? Feinen, Steinen, Stumensteinen. Let's um, ask the Republicans for some money for Iran. You know, we need to offset the effect of these tariffs. We need to pay our jihadi fighters. We need to print more Korans. We need to build more mosques. We need to invade the USA. Um, I don't know. Uh, we need more money for nuclear shit, man. We need we need nuclear. We need we need we need to go on jihad, you know, because we're sitting at home and we only have our own wives and children to rape. We need fresh pizza. You know, we need some fresh sauce, some pasta. Yes, we need money for these things. So give our money to Iran, Feinstein, so that they can uh, have pizza and pasta and sauce and uh, money for jihad, right? And money for nuclear weapons. I'm going to end the video on this note. Let's take Trump's term limits off and see how Democrats behave. They'll roll over like a fucking dog.